Hey guys, it's Max from Max Tech. Today we're going to be comparing Microsoft's new Surface Pro X, which is their iPad Pro killer, against the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. We're going to look at a variety of different things such as the exterior design, the build quality, the displays, the keyboards, the pens, uh, the performance, speakers, and more. Let's jump right into it and start off with design. So looking at the backs of them here, I really like how the Surface Pro X looks. It's very clean. We just have the Windows logo or the Surface Microsoft logo here. And if we grab them into our hands, the iPad has this really square iPhone 5 style design and it's very symmetrical all around. The bezels are symmetrical, square all around, and it feels really nice and premium. Now the Surface Pro X does have this little curve. So it's not squared off and then we have uh, the button sticking out more so we have the little uh, stand that pops out little indents here so it doesn't seem as premium we have some holes in the bottom for the case uh, but in general it is a little bit more comfortable in the hand because it isn't square it has a subtle curve on the back taking a look at the front we have very slim bezels on the sides even though we have built-in speakers on either side uh, the chin and the forehead are much thicker and we do have sensors built in here for face authentication up here at the top everything is nice and smooth where we transition between the glass and the frame and then coming to this edge we start feeling a little bit of sharp edges here where the glass is sunk deeper and it is really extreme here almost like you can get scratched uh, because the glass isn't sitting flush now the iPad has quad speakers. We have two on each side and it does work in stereo mode. But if we look at the bottom, we just have one USB type C port. Whereas the Surface Pro X, not only does it have two USB type C ports right over here, they also have a special Microsoft connection here. And the included charger in the box is a high power charger that will connect in here and it's magnetically detachable so it can't get yanked. And also charge uh, from zero to 100% in about an hour hour and a half compared to the 18 watt charger with uh, the iPad which takes about three and a half hours. Now it is rated at 13 hours of battery life but because of the screen reflectivity and having to have it in full performance mode pretty much all the time it actually runs about six hours of battery life in real world use compared to the iPad which is rated at 10 hours of battery life and that's about what it actually gets. Now the last major difference on the outside of the devices is the fact that the Surface Pro X has a built-in stand. So you can pop it up like this. It is very stiff so you have a really big range of adjustability. If you want to use it like this with a built-in keyboard you can or if you're watching movies you can prop it up like this. Whereas the iPad does not have that. Now it does have a square edge but you probably don't want to be balancing it <laughs> like this. So for that you will be needing the keyboard covers. Now both of these have their own covers. The iPads is a little bit more expensive and we'll be talking about prices towards the end of this video, but it does offer some protection for the back of the device. It is magnetic, so it just aligns by itself, clips in, and we have two ranges of adjustability here uh, for you to use it. Uh, personally, I really like the surface, the fact that you have all the levels of adjustability, um, whether you're using it on your lap or using it at a desk, you can adjust it to the perfect angle, which is much more convenient. Now it also has a hidden feature in here, and that is the pen holder. So here is the pen for the device, and you just drop it in, and if it's the wrong direction, it will actually flip and start charging. And if you don't need it, you can actually pop up the keyboard like this and hide it, which is very nice. Now the iPad just attaches the pen magnetically to to the top like that. Uh, that means if you throw it into your bag, it can get bumped off. I mean, it's fairly secure, but it can get detached where this one is nice hidden, stored, and you're not gonna lose it. Even though the Surface X's keyboard is less expensive, it packs in a lot more features. If we just look at them, the first thing you'll notice is that we have a trackpad. Now the trackpad won't set any records. It's not amazing, but it will get the job done and it's better than not having it at all and not having mouse support really. Uh, it feels decent, you can click with it, you can do different gestures, and along with that, we also have a variety of other features. We have shortcut keys here, we can adjust the brightness, we can actually turn on backlighting, which the keyboard has built in, media keys, stuff like that. Whereas the iPad's keyboard doesn't have a trackpad, you can't adjust the screen very much with it, and you're missing those shortcuts, meaning you're gonna be reaching for the touchscreen much more often. Now, the actual keyboards themselves, once again, it is better on the Surface cover. We have a surprising amount of key travel here, and while it's not gonna set any records, once again, 
for a little attachment cover, it is quite good. Whereas the iPads has less key travel and it just doesn't feel as nice. It feels quite shallow and everything's covered with this little material on here. Now you can get used to it and type fairly well with it, but if I have to compare both these, the Surface's actual keyboard cover is miles ahead. Now let's compare the displays. The Surface uses a three by two aspect ratio, whereas the iPad uses four by three, meaning it has a little bit more vertical resolution, which is nice for web pages, but it is a downside if you watch videos because your black bars are gonna be larger. Now, as far as the actual resolution, the pixels per inch is very similar. Both of them are gonna have really nice details, nice and sharp icons, text, stuff like that because they're so similar. And as far as the color accuracy, uh, the Surface has 99% sRGB, meaning it's fairly color accurate, but the iPad goes a step above that and has about 25% more colors uh, with the DCI-P3 rating. Now, as far as brightness, they are fairly similar. The iPad is rated for 500 nits compared to 450, but there is one massive difference between the two, and that is screen reflectivity. Apple has top of the line coatings, so it blocks out so much of the reflection Reflections, and that means you can use it at lower brightness levels without seeing other stuff and having distractions. Whereas the surface, the reflectivity is very poor. You see everything. So you kind of have to max out the brightness and even still you see quite a bit of reflections, especially if you're in brighter rooms or using it outside, which is a major bummer. Another downside of the iPad is because of the iOS, it can only play back at 1080p quality. Whereas with Windows, uh, the Surface Pro X can actually support 8K video at 60 frames per second. Now the processor is too slow, but you can handle 4K 60 frames per second. But a downside of the Surface is that the contrast is much lower compared to the iPad, which has truer blacks. Now, one of the biggest differences between the displays is the fact that the Surface Pro X runs at a standard 60 frames per second, whereas the iPad Pro has ProMotion, meaning it can run at up to 120 frames per second. But not only that, it can actually scale down to 60, 30, or even 24 frames per second, depending on what you're doing. That way, it saves battery life as well. And that could be seen if we're on the home screen, say we're flipping through different apps, or if you have some kind of uh, anything open like say a web browser, everything is extremely fluid. I mean, you can't really even show this off or know what it feels like unless you've actually used it compared to your standard 60 Hertz, which when you compare them side by side, it looks a lot more choppy and kind of blurry when you're scrolling through things. Now, another way that ProMotion really helps is when you are using a pen. The drawing experience is fantastic on the iPad Pro. Apple not only has a 120 Hertz screen, they also have been refining uh, the delay and minimizing it. So when we look at the side by side in slow motion, you could definitely tell that the iPad is more responsive. There's almost no lag. Now with the Surface Pro X, uh, you do have a little bit of delay, but it is not bad for more normal drawing and the pressure sensitivity is really quite good. Now where we start to have an issue is if we have different effects, say like this glitter uh, pen here, or for stacking different layers, you start getting really bad delay and it becomes really difficult to use. All right guys, now it's time to compare the speakers. For somebody that wants to use your device to have web conferences, use uh, FaceTime with the iPad, this is the quality of the video and the audio that you can expect from the iPad Pro. And this is the quality with the Microsoft Surface Book S. So go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below which one looks better and which one sounds better. Now for something that you guys have been waiting for and that is performance. Now the iPad Pro has a crazy A12X Bionic processor with super high performance. And here we have Microsoft's custom Snapdragon SQ1. I have Geekbench 5 open. I'm gonna run these, uh, but I do wanna mention that uh, the graphics doesn't even show up in Geekbench 5 so we won't be able to tell 
test that with this program, but we can test the CPU scores. So let's go ahead and get that going. The iPad Pro has four gigs of RAM, at least in most of the models, whereas the Surface Pro X has eight gigs of RAM as base. And you can go all the way up to 16 gigs. Now you may think that that's gonna help performance with the Surface Pro X, but not really because it's running full Windows and needs a lot more system resources compared to iPad OS, which is very well optimized for that amount of RAM. And as far as actual real world performance, well, you guys will see that in just a second. So the results are in and the iPad Pro is more than 50% faster in single core and more than 60% faster in multi-core. Now that is a substantial difference, but that doesn't mean that the score of the Surface Pro X is bad by any means. It is pretty respectable, but that is only in this benchmark. Now the differences show up when we're actually using them and doing various things. Now I have some hands-on time with the Surface Pro X and so far I've been fairly disappointed. For example, as we've been shooting this video, we've been browsing the web, playing back these YouTube videos, and the iPad is super smooth, performs great, whereas the Surface Pro X is quite laggy. So let's go ahead and open this up and let's maximize this video here. There you go, I actually touched it first on the Surface Pro X and then the iPad. And you guys see what is happening right there. And then if we open up our power mode, we are set to the best performance. And that's when I was talking about having to be set to the best performance and the battery life starts going uh, not so good. And then things like scrolling in the timeline here, I'm gonna grab this. Scrolling is super smooth. We're getting the preview for the thumbnail. You guys see all of that lag right there. And this is in higher performance mode. Let's do a web browser test. I'm gonna open up YouTube at the same time on both of them. So that was really, really fast. Let's hit search here for a Mac tech. All right, that popped up. We have the same video right over here. And do keep in mind that this is not in the app. This is in the web browser, Safari versus Edge. Both they come preloaded with. Open that up. This is loading and going. Scrolling down here. And let's switch to another video. Pretty much instant here. Here hasn't even done anything yet. There you go. And we are loading up. I have speedometer web browser test right here. So let's go ahead and run that. The results are in and the iPad Pro scored 132 compared to 38.99, so basically 39 there. Um, and so that just shows you the performance difference when you're in the web browser. And that is using Safari and Edge, which should be optimized. Now, the reason why we have such a big difference in performance and why we're getting glitchiness, even when it's set to high performance mode, is because Windows is uh, not really designed for this ARM processor. The processor in here, the reason I put it in is because because it can make the device lightweight, not heat up, be power efficient, uh, but we're having a lot of issues software-wise. Now, a lot of programs can't even be run. For example, I couldn't download Premiere Pro to test video editing, it's not even supported. Same thing with Lightroom, the mobile version, and Lightroom Classic. Now, I was able to get Photoshop in here, and we, I'll go ahead and open it up. And the performance is really poor. Here I'm importing a file, and as you guys can see, I'm pulling the slider, everything is crazy choppy copy and uh, this is actually running worse than a 2015 base model MacBook Pro with four gigs of RAM. That is quite a bit smoother and everything just really stalls. I get errors that show up. Um, right here saying we don't have enough video RAM and it really makes it unusable. So a lot of really powerful apps that you're used to using that are designed for Windows will not even work because they're designed in 64-bit and there's not that many 32-bit the apps and a lot of the ones that are available like this one are outdated and they are quite slow. So here you guys see me zooming in. You guys can see all that stutter and that's without any layers. That's just one layer right there. And this is the issue that the Surface Pro X is going to have. The iPad does not have a full operating system. It has iPad OS in here, but Apple has been updating it over the years. We've had a big improvement with the latest release. We have files app, support for external drives, and the ecosystem with the crazy amount of optimized apps is really nice. So we don't have full Mac OS, but the apps that we do have, such as Lightroom here, I'll go ahead and open up that same photograph and you guys can see the difference in performance. Here, I'm dragging the slider, everything is absolutely instant, no lag, 
It can zoom in, look at that. I mean, the performance for photo editing is really, really good, top of line. You can do pro work with this tablet. Now, with that said, which one would I rather buy? And for me, it is a no-brainer. Even if you are not in the Apple ecosystem at all, the iPad Pro makes a lot of sense, especially when you start using it. Everything is super fluid from the web browser to all the apps, everything is optimized, and the app library is massive. You'll find apps for photo editing, video editing, productivity, Everything is built in and it works excellent. The display is great, it's not reflective, the battery life is great. Now for uh, the Surface Pro X, the main selling point is the ARM processor, which is supposed to give you good battery life and it's supposed to give you good performance. But because of the windows and all the emulation and apps that aren't working properly, the performance is poor and the battery life is poor as well because you have to run it in full performance all the time. And not only do you ha don't have a vast library of apps like you do with iOS or Android, but most high-end good Windows apps that people buy Windows laptops for also do not work. And for the future, are there gonna be more apps that are optimized? We really do not know, which makes it quite risky. So yes, it's a little bit less expensive, but overall the iPad works, it works now, and it's not really gonna let you down. So that is my opinion. You guys let me know your opinions down in the comments section below. I will be putting out a full review once I test it out even further. If you guys wanna see that, click that little circle above to subscribe, and you guys can see a couple more videos right over there. This has been Max with Mastech, and I will see you in the next video.